Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today our focus is going to be on the company Alibaba Group, ticker BABA. The multinational Chinese conglomerate founded in 1999 specializing in e-commerce, cloud computing, digital media and more. Since this is a Chinese based business and if you're buying into the company you're actually purchasing American depository receipts otherwise known as ADRs. So you should understand the risks of owning ADRs of a foreign company before investing in it. In this video, we'll look at Alibaba's financials, perform a stock valuation, and at the end of the video, we'll go into computer modeling the forecast of 52-week stock movement. So let's jump right into it. Here's Alibaba's financials, and first I'll point out that the far right bar in each chart represents the trailing 12 months. Also, the fiscal year ends in March, so the next, next full year results will not be available until April-May time period. Uh, now looking at the graphs, we'll look at the uh, top left first for revenue. And we can see the significant growth they've had since 2015 and with 2023 and the trailing 12 months slightly down from their all-time high in 2022 but you know this growth over the these 10 years went from just over 12 billion in revenue to almost 130 billion so very significant growth there and one thing you need to think to yourself is you know how much more can they grow from this point on and then moving over to net income, we can see this is a little choppy with some down years, particularly in 2022, down almost 60 percent from 2021. But since then, net income has been trending upward. And overall, they went from uh, just under 3.9 billion to 18.7 billion. So, again, significant growth on their net income. Then earnings per share pretty much following the same trend as net income. And we'll see in a minute that over the past few years, the company has began, uh, begun buying back their shares. So moving forward, the share buyback should help push up the uh, earnings per share. Then book value, though 2023 was slightly down. But besides that, very nice growth trajectory here. And that's what we want to see in a company. These charts going up and to the right, except for share count. That's the one that we want to see going down. Then moving on, Alibaba paid the first dividend back in December for $1 per share. And I believe moving forward, they're going to plan on continuing to pay a dividend. And we'll see if over time they're able to raise that. And then for shares, as I mentioned a few moments ago, they began buying back their shares a few years ago. And although looking at the chart, we can see they are slightly higher from 2015. But currently on the right track to bring that share count down, as we can see, it's been on the decline since 2021. And moving on to free cash flow, uh, 2022 was down, but since then has recovered nicely. And the trailing 12 months is the highest it's been during these past 10 years. So nice to see there. And free cash flow per share on the similar trend with the uh, recent share buyback, we can see this having a bigger percentage gain since 2022 over the uh, free cash flow that we just looked at. So we can tell that these uh, share buybacks are having an impact on these uh per share values and then revenue per share showing the uh, trailing 12 months being the highest it's been helped by those share buybacks we've been mentioning so let's now move on and we will perform the stock valuation here's the initial setup valuation for alibaba and we'll discuss making some modifications to this in a moment but what i have is an intrinsic value of just over 107 dollars and with a 60 percent margin of safety brings that down to just over 64 dollars now the stock is currently trading slightly higher than this at around seventy dollars now my valuation is based on a four percent short-term growth rate over the next year over the next 10 years with a 10 percent discount rate and a three percent long-term growth rate and one thing i do want to point out is the uh, net income kager of the last 10 years has been slightly over 19 percent now you might be thinking well 19 percent for a 10-year kager but i am only using a four percent growth rate and the reason why i'm only using a four percent growth rate is because there are reports out there that the uh, china chinese economy is not as robust as it might appear and it's potentially slowing down or possibly going to uh, hit a deflationary economy so i do want to be a little conservative and i'm bringing it down to four percent and for margin of safety i'm using a pretty aggressive 60 percent and that's because of the current state of the u.s and china relations i'm not on the best terms and every so often you hear uh potential discussions about taiwan so 
Uh, I'm just trying to be a little extra conservative uh, for a company like this. But if you're thinking my 4% short-term growth rate is being a little too conservative, as uh, Alibaba is a dominant company in China, and they also have some international exposure, that this 4% could be uh, at least slightly higher. So let's move that 4% short-term growth rate up to 6%, and we'll see how it uh, impacts the valuation. So with a 6% short-term growth rate, we can see intrinsic value jumps up to uh, just over $125 and using that same 60% margin of safety brings it down to uh, just over $75. So slightly above where it's currently trading at. So you know, if you want to be a little more aggressive as shown here with the uh, short-term growth rate, uh, this could be a potential opportunity to buy into the stock. As for me, I just want to be a little more conservative, and I would only consider this as we uh, just looked at if it gets into the uh, lower uh, $60 range. Let's scroll down a little bit and look at some other data points for Alibaba. We can see PE ratio under 10, so definitely in that value opportunity range, but you just got to weigh all the risks and concerns there are with investing in China, so you need to take that into account. Uh, we can see long-term debt to free cash flow. I like seeing companies under three. We can see they're well under under that, actually under one. So that's a good sign there. Uh, they only just started paying dividends, as mentioned, so there's no uh, growth there just yet. Uh, share count, as we mentioned, they have been buying back shares over the last couple of years. But from 2015, it is slightly higher. We can see almost 2% higher. But good news is they have started buying back shares. And net profit margin. I like seeing companies over 10%. We could see over the last 10 years, almost 26%. The last three years, yes, it's over 10, it is over 10% at uh, 10.06. However, it is considerably lower than what the average has been over the last 10 years. So a little bit of a concern there to watch for uh, moving forward with Alibaba. So let's move on and we will look at computer modeling to forecast the 52 week stock movement. Here in the computer modeling software, I already ran the analysis using two methods. First, the M5 rule shown here and the other random forest. And I already copied all the results and pasted them into Excel as it's a little easy to see it there. But let's look at the uh, results real quickly here first. And this data is as of January 22nd. And the far right hand column is the weekly average stock price for Alibaba. And the column right next to it is the weekly average stock price for the S&P 500 ETF. Other columns are just other various data points used in the analysis. And we can see here in the far right-hand column, the stock is $68.63. And we're going to scroll down real quick and just see what the outlook is, 52 weeks. And we can see here, it's showing slightly higher out in uh, January of next year at just over uh, $72. So a slight gain uh, random uh, M5 rule is showing from where we are today. Now let's take a quick look at random forest. And same thing, the data is as of January 22nd. We can see the uh, that weekly average stock price there. And scrolling down in 52 weeks, we can see it's actually showing a nice little gain out in uh, January of next year, closing just over $106. But let's move over to Excel and look at all this data a little closer. Back in Excel, I already pasted all the data from the computer modeling. And first thing I want to point out is the vertical red line uh, represents this previous Monday, January 22nd. And everything to the left of that vertical red line is the historical stock price for Alibaba. And everything to the right is the computer modeling prediction. So let's look at a little history of Alibaba stock price movement first. And we can see it began trading back in September of 2014 at around $92. From there, it had a slow start falling to the high $50 range in 2015, then recovering in 2017, 2018, and getting above $200, followed by a pullback in late 2018 and continued into 2019, uh, then reaching all-time highs above $300 in late 2020. But we can see in 2021, the price began falling and continued to do so until where we are today at around $70. Now let's we'll jump over to another tab and look at the computer modeling predictions a little closer. Looking at the M5 rule first, it's showing a slight and steady gain for the next 52 weeks uh, with the stock price reaching $72 out in January, 2025. 
which would be about a 5% gain. Now, if the U.S.-China relations do not improve, we might very well see Alibaba's stock staying at this lower valuation. But I do feel it could potentially drop a little lower from where we are today, uh, possibly getting into the uh, low 60s. I doubt it will drop below 60, as that would mean it would be trading below its book value. So that's probably unlikely unless something uh, major happens in the market. But let's move on and look at Random Forest next. For Random Forest, it's predicting a recovery in the stock price continuing throughout the year, getting above $90 in September, and then going up even more, hitting $110 out in October, and closing out the 52 weeks at just over $106 for a gain of almost 55%. Now, if things do improve in the U.S. and China relations, it's very likely we can see this type of recovery. But let's move on and look at the uh, average of these two methods. Now, taking the average of the M5 rule and random forest, it's showing a recovery as well, getting above $90 by October and hovering around this price point going into January 2025 and closing out the 52 weeks at just over $89, which would be a gain of almost 30%. To recap, I believe Alibaba is trading below its intrinsic value with a reasonable margin of safety. However, due to the current relations between U.S. and China, this does introduce additional risk and uncertainty. And for that, I'm going to hold off buying into the company at this time. Now, maybe if the stock falls to the low $60 range, or if I believe uh, things are improving between the two countries, I might consider buying in at that point in time. Now, for the computer modeling, we did see that the M5 rule is showing the stock to stay relatively flat, closing out the next 52 weeks slightly higher at $72, while Random Forest is bullish, uh, with it showing a nice recovery, getting up to $106 out in January 2025, which we might see if things do improve between the uh, U.S. and China, working things out. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and got some useful information. If so, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.